So, you know, <clears throat> when we are in when we are in habitual uh, forms in our mind and in our hearts in relationships, how do we how do we meet a relationship, any relationship? It could be with your family, it could be with a friend, it could be with a pet, it could be with a stranger. How do we meet a relationship with authenticity and curiosity and full presence? Um, and have unknown available to us that we're, we don't have to make assumptions about how um, a relationship will feel in any given moment. And this is very difficult to do for any relationship that we've had a lot of history with, where we kind of step into the grooves of, of what that feels like. So can you let your yoga practice be, you know, the playground for us to practice the art of stepping out of habit? Um, so much there's so much beauty in habit you know like we warm up the same way and it feels good and it helps us enter into our um our bodies well um but then we can kind of get caught where we're just on autopilot so can you today in your practice let the um the focus be trying to sense sensation as if you had never felt it before to sense a pose that you've done a thousand times as if you've never done it before um, so, you know, <clears throat> like I said, habits can be really good. Last thing I want to say, my dad, as you all know, is, is very much declining. He was able to go outside and have a slight catch with my sister. And, you know, he's stumbling, can barely walk, but he, you get a mitt on his hand. And it's like all that body memory just lives in him. And he could cat, he can't even see, but he could catch a ball and gently throw it and catch a ball. And it was such fluid movements in his body that he didn't have to think. His body didn't have to react in any way. It just was a, it was so ingrained in him. And this is what the joy of habits bring. You know, when we have something so ingrained, those gutters so deeply grooved within us, it can be a really beautiful thing that we can rely on, but it also can be something that can get us stuck and into a gutter. So see if you can feel in your body today, <clears throat> the joy and beauty of both of those things, of newness and curiosity and possibility and um, no expectations and just sensing what's here and now, and then uh, appreciating and living in the rhythms that you have set for a very long time. Okay, so close your eyes and take a moment to um, <clears throat> drop into your awareness. And Feel um, a grounding. Now, if when you close your eyes, you're sensing your body for the very first time, like let's say you, you know, just landed in this body of yours for the first time ever. What does it feel like to be you right in this moment? You feel the architecture of your body, you know, the, the place you live. Can you feel a sense of openness and curiosity in your mind? Can you kind of scrub away any of the barriers around your heart so that even your heart is like the innocence of a, a young child that has not, um, you know, had to close themselves up yet? So sense into this anahata, this unstruck anahata chakra, the heart chakra, something that cannot be harmed, cannot be destroyed. And let's feel into, imagine that that is the truth of who you are, that you cannot be harmed, that you cannot be destroyed. Can you feel the crown and the tail? Can you feel the open heart? Can you feel a sense of curiosity in your senses, freedom in your senses? Like your antennas are up and ready to receive. Bring your breath into the newness of this form within you.
place our hands together and the, in your intentions, whatever they may be today, can you feed um, a little bit of that curiosity, openness to new possibility, and also gratitude for the deeply woven pathways that support us. And release your hands. And let's go ahead and find our way onto our back. So as you stretch out <clears throat> and find a sense of length in your body, enjoy. So remember, we're, we're appreciating the habits and we're opening to the possibility of something new. So reach into a stretch, arms overhead and feel some beautiful length. When something becomes familiar, like, oh, yeah, I've done this before, appreciate, come home to the familiarity, and then ask yourself, what's new? What's here that's new? Bring your knees into your chest and rock a bit. Let's circle, roll around in one direction. And you know, simple ways to create novelty in the body is to do unusual movements. So, you know, you do you circle the same direction all the time? So if you have pathways that are a little less comfortable, lean into those pathways, brush your teeth with the other hand, eat your dinner with the fork in the other side of your body, okay, the other hand. All right, let's open up your knees away from each other and bring them back. You can do simple things like drawing without any expectation of what you're drawing with your non-dominant hand. So choose opportunities to cultivate new pathways. <clears throat> All right, spread your limbs wide, reach into your fingers and your toes and wiggle them and see how much space you can take up. And while Wiggling your fingers and your toes, let's bring our hands together and our feet together. Reach out and wiggle a little bit so you know where your edges are. And then try to create a shape. So walk your legs as wide as they will go and your hands as wide as they will go. Maybe hands can come down toward legs. So you kind of form a, a shape. Maybe it's a circle, maybe it's not quite a circle, but take up room and notice if you were, um, you know, I don't know if those things are called where you put a pencil in a compass, a compass. If you were a compass, um, what would be the form that the pencil would draw with your hands and your feet? And then bring your knees back to your chest, rock a little bit. And as you sway from side to side, feel as though that your insides are just sloshing from one side to the other, like you're made of water on the inside and you're just kind of shaking up the water, walking from one side to the head, then one side to the other, and the head rocks too. Notice the soothing nature of this on your nervous system. And then one more time, a big giant star on the ground, stretch open your limbs, reach, exhale, knees into your chest, Pick up your head and let's roll to your side and come up onto your hands and knees. Okay. All right, so breathe your way into some cat cows. So even though these poses we do, we repeat, you know, what I, I, there's nothing new under the sun kind of thing that we've, we've made these shapes before lots of times in our body. So lean into that history but also feel what's new today. What does your body feel in the here and now? How is the breath moving through you today? I taught my brother cat cow this weekend. He had never done a cat cow before. He didn't know what cat cow was. And it was so uh, interesting to watch someone do such a simple yoga pose, something that we do every practice probably, who had never done it before, um, to feel what this pose offers with these brand new eyes. So even though you've done this pose a million times, have brand new eyes.
Oh, let's swag and swish and sway and touch into any little nook and cranny. And then stretch back towards child's pose. Walk the hands forward, inching, inching, one arm and then the other arm. So you get this dynamic stretch moving through your shoulders. Kind of lean into one side, walk that hand forward, then lean into the other side and walk that hand forward. And then after this kind of rocking from one side to the other, let's become still for a moment and seek the midline, seek the symmetry and let yourself relax within that. And while you're here, if it's comfy and you might need to put your elbows on blocks to do this, bring your palms together and bring your thumb. I'm gonna put your hands on blocks. I feel like this is more comfortable with my elbows on two blocks. So you can do either way, head thumb toward your spine and open up your triceps. See if you can get the thoracic spine to get a little free. While you're here in this deep stretch for your triceps, breathe deeply into the back of your body. And come back. Moving on to all fours again, hands come down onto the ground. Move the blocks out of the way, left arm reaching up and bring that left arm through, twisting to the side, let your head rest. Enjoy the novelty of what your body's feeling in this pose. Twists have their own unique dyn dynamic nature. Feel the breath travel through the twist. And inhale, reach that arm back up in the air. Hand comes down onto the ground. Second side, right arm up in the air. <clears throat> Bring that arm through, twisting here, enjoying your twist. Breathing into your twist. Check in with your skull. Make sure your head is relaxed. Arm lifting to the sky, hand held high. And hand down onto the ground. Curl the toes under. Let's stretch back towards child's pose with your toes curled under. Wake up and open up the bottom of your feet. And it may be uncomfortable. So, you know, especially if you have some troubles with your toes or your feet, just go where your body can go. And we're going to go back and forth with some child's poses, changing our feet shape. So, Come back up onto all fours. Now the tops of the feet lie flat, drop down into child pose. We're gonna come up to on our shins, reaching the arms to the sky. And then exhale back to child's pose on the tops of our feet. Hands forward, all fours, curl toes under, back towards child's pose, breathe out. Inhale, breathe in, arms coming to the sky. Toes are still curled under. Exhale, back to child's pose. Forward out to all fours. Last time with feet flat on the ground. Tops of feet rest on the earth, child's pose. On your in-breath, rising up, arms to the sky. Exhale, relax down, arms down at your side. Feel the curling into a ball, let your shoulders relax. Take your hands out in front of you. Come on up to dog pose. Lift up, lengthen through your body. Okay, so let's pedal your feet, <clears throat> dropping one heel down and then the other heel down. See if you can feel your way into opening up your calves, stretching up, stretching open, but not just right at your heel, but all the way up the whole back of your leg. And you can finish pedaling. You can bounce a little bit or vibrate, or you can try to lift one whole foot up and then back down onto the ground. Again, make some novelty happen. Maybe you can march your feet with some straight legs while you're hip lifting one hip high and then dropping it and then the other. Okay, so just experiments. 
when you're feeling like, oh, now I'm in my body in this pose, then find the ground, yield, give your weight, lift the heart toward the hips as you rise. So we have this um, giving weight down and then rising up, yield, and then push off the ground to reach through the body. Fill yourself with breath. Hug your hands toward each other. Feel the mounds of your hands on the ground. Walk your feet forward. Come to Uttanasana. Now notice, you know, there might be obviously a lot of familiarity in your posture. Does anything feel like um, coming home? Um, sometimes these first passes through can be uncomfortable. Sometimes they can be deeply nourishing, like you're you're finding yourself for the first time today. So whatever you're feeling, enjoy. Reach up into a halfway lift. The spine can get longer. Feel the bottom of your feet. Okay, so root down to rise up. Feel the grounding of the four corners of your feet across the toe beds. Then feel the arches have that dynamic lift and feel it all the way up into the hips. Extend through your spine here. When you're ready to melt, hold forward on your exhale, relax your knees. Inhale, come all the way up, arms coming to the sky, open the chest. Lean back a little if it feels good, let's cactus, open the arms. And then release your hands down. Big circles here. So maybe your shoulders don't do this. So you just find what your shoulders do. We're gonna add legs swooping a little more here. So come down, bend your knees up. Big breath. If this is too much movement, you modify. And up at the top, we're gonna to go the other direction. And up at the top, lengthen through your body. Grab onto your right wrist with your left hand and stretch over to the side, grounding through your legs. And we're gonna sweep forward, change the cross. And now we're holding onto the other wrist over to the other side. Feel that extension and openness. And then come back to center. Spread your hands straight out toward the walls next to you, fingertips up toward the sky. Some little circles with our shoulders, with our whole arms, really. And a couple passes going the other direction. Relax your arms down. Shake out your hands and your arms. Give a good shrug, breathe in. Squeeze your shoulders up toward your ears. Hold your breath for a moment. Let that go one more time. Right, interlace your hands behind your back and then switch it. Go interlacing the other way. Open your chest. Notice the novelty of just something so simple as clasping your hands differently. Open the chest, hug the shoulder blades toward each other, bend your knees and come forward. Relax your neck. And release your hands, grab onto your elbows. Maybe your feet need to go a little wider and we're just going to elephant trunk sway here a little bit. Bear weight into one foot and then into the other. Letting your, letting your body rock. All right, hands on blocks, halfway lift. Spine spacious, exhale and fold. Step your left foot back, right foot is in front, a lunge. Bend and straighten your knee. These habits that we have in the body of movement patterns, celebrate the ones that are really good for you, like this. Sometimes habits in the body, you know, are unconscious movement patterns that end up not being our favorite or best patterns, but sometimes they're really good patterns. Lunging, rising up. Okay. Bring your hands down at your sides for a moment. 
bend your back knee a little bit so you feel yourself dropping a little closer to the earth. Feel the stability of your pelvis. Lift your pubic bone toward your navel. And then bring your arms up and see if you can lift your ribs off your hips and descend your hips down toward the ground. Feel that space in the side bodies and then the full spine. Okay, let's twist over to the right. Find your back. Reaching that arm back up in the air. And hands come down. Back foot folds uh, forward, back forward. So that we're in Uttanasana, let your neck relax. Inhale for a halfway lift. The spine gets long, spread out the bones of your feet. Exhale and melt again. Step back, left foot is in front, right foot is behind. And chest stays open. Start to move and breathe. Novelty. And feel the sensations. Feel your breath. What's new here today? And it doesn't have to be that it's a new sensation that you've never felt before or a new movement that you've never done before, but a newness in the sense that this is the here and now. This is what's happening now, not before, not later, just here. Okay, ground your legs, that front knee bends, find your stability, and then rise up. Arms down at your sides to begin. Open up your collarbones. Let's bring our arms back. Now, as we find a little bit of uh, arch in the back, see if you can bend the back knee and feel that stability in your pelvis. Lift your pubic bone toward your navel and then swoop your arms up. Maybe straighten the leg out a little bit and see if you can prevent that kind of collapse and compress in the back of your spine. And instead, Drop the pelvis down, lift the ribs up, feel your neck get softer. Breathing well. Twist when you're ready, arms coming out to the sides or hands on hips. Breathe well. Hug to the midline with your legs, feel that grounding of your legs. Back up, arms to the sky, hands come down, dog pose. All right, so long, spacious spine. Feel into the breath moving through you. A nice inhale and a nice exhale, full and deep. Our breath is always in the present. We're living in the gutters of those grooves that we've laid out in our body unconsciously. The breath is what renews the present moment awareness. Come forward into a plank. Nice and stable and strong. Bear weight evenly through your hands. Bear weight evenly through your feet. Find that stability in the center of your body. And let's go ahead and find the ground. You can put your knees down first if you want to. Bring your arms out in front of you like a V. Palms on the ground. Inhale. Extend into this back bend, back bend and reach your legs. Stay up here, stay breathing up here. Full length of your spine. Try not to compress the low back, but feel all the length moving your pelvis and your chest away from each other. Relax and melt. So find the ground, lift up your feet. Okay. And you can rock a little bit left and right if you want to. Then we're going to roll over onto our right side. Bend your knees. You can always use a block for a pillow under your head if you want. Grab onto the top of the left ankle and stretch that left knee back. Same thing with the pelvis. We want that pelvic tilt to help us with our low back. So instead of kind of letting the belly fall and compressing the back body, engage the core from not just Hugging right at your rib cage. Hug lower. So lift the pubic bone toward the belly button. See if you can um, take some of the 
strength of your glutes, you know, because we typically want to use our glutes to do this kind of action. And instead of overbearing with the glutes, feel the pelvic floor support. So we'll have a little glutes, a little pelvic floor, a little core, all sharing in the stability of our pelvis. Stretch your femur bone away from your hip. See if you can maybe even take your thigh bone back toward the wall behind you. Relax. Come over onto the other side. So you can roll under your back or your belly, whichever feels comfy. You can use a block under your head for a, a pillow. If you want to bend your knees, bend at the hips. Go ahead and reach your um, right knee up toward your chest, right hand on your ankle. And then stretch that leg back. Keep the knee in line with the hip instead of lifting toward the sky. Keep your neck out of it. Let your head rest. Notice what your pelvis wants to naturally do. Do you tend to relax in this pose? Is there any stability that naturally arises? So see what you can do to find that stability. Zip up your pubic bone toward your navel, feeling the deep compression of the abdominal muscles. Can you feel the pelvic floor? Can you feel your glutes? Just a little bit. You don't have to overdo any of these muscle groups. And then once you have that stability for your back, stretch your femur bone away from your pelvis and then draw it back toward the wall behind you. Keeping stable in your pelvis the whole while. Relax. And feel yourself come out of there, come up onto all fours and move your spine around. Okay, so wag your tail, curl the toes under, lift to dog pose as you're ready. A long, spacious spine, feel into that length. Bend your knees a little bit so you can feel the ribs move toward the pelvis down, the pelvis move away from the head. Feel that length in your body. Melt into your breath. Bring your right leg straight up in the air. Let's stack it open. Find your breath. And then square up your hips again. Deep breath in here. Exhale, knee to your chest. Shoulders over your wrists. Inhale, bring that leg back up in the air. Now we'll bring it through, come to a lunge. Plant your back heel down, Virabhadrasana one. When you come up, interlace your hands the strange way. Feel the rib cage lift off the pelvis. Feel the pelvis drop down into the feet. Feel the openness of the heart. Maybe look up, try not to compress the back body. Release your hands, find your breath. We're gonna bring our left arm, I'm sorry, our right arm on top of our left arm for eagle arms. Find your breath, ground your legs. Lean forward, hop up into Virabhadrasana three with your arms interlaced like this. Find the breath, square the hips. And then we're gonna slowly use your balance powers. Come on up to stand on that foot, lift your knee. Left thigh crosses over right thigh, squat into eagle pose. Squeeze, and if you have to pause and reconnect, that's great. Just do your postures the way you can. Lift your heart, that unburdened heart. Okay, keep the bind of your arms, lift that knee up in the air again. Stretch all the way back to Virabhadrasana three. Pause in Vira three for a minute, hip square, and then place your back heel down. Lift your arms up, unwind, unburden the arms, reach them to the sky. Place the hands down onto the ground, back foot comes forward, forward fold. You have your hands on blocks. If you want, relax your head. Inhale for a halfway lift and feel that symmetry. Exhale and melt again. Step back to dog pose. Extending through the spine here. Breathing well. Find a renewed sense of um, awareness of present moment. What do your hands feel like? What do the feet feel like the toe bend? 
You feel the earth, feel the texture underneath you. Go deeper, sink your awareness deeper through your mat and whatever's underneath it, through the floor, down all the way to the earth. Let's lift the right leg up in the air. Stack open the right hip, bend your knee if you want, feel into that open hip. And then square the hips, stretch that leg straight back. Deep breath in, exhale, knee the nose or knee the chest. Inhale, bring it back. Bring that foot forward, lunge. Plant the back heel down. This time, start with your hands behind you. Interlace your hands the weird way behind your back. Lengthen through your spine, stay low. Round through your legs. Coming on up, arms behind you, open the chest. Breathing well. Unwind the arms, bring them in front of you. Still with the weird way of holding your hands, stretch your arms up over your head. Try not to compress in the low back and push your ribs out. Find that integration that we were finding in that thigh stretch on the floor. Feel the bone up, press into your feet. Ribs off the pelvis, pelvis down to the feet. Release your arms. This time we're going to bring the right arm. Oops, I'm sorry. I always forget. Left arm over your right arm. Okay. We're going to come up into Virabhadrasana three. Breathing well. Right arm over left arm. You're standing on your right leg. Square hips. When you're ready, slowly start to stand up. It's okay if you lose your balance. Just come back. Bring that knee up in the air, cross the leg over, and come into Eagle Pose. A good squeeze once you're here. Breathe, let your eyes soften. The chest is still open and broad, nothing's collapsed. Find the difference between a compression and a collapsing. So squeeze your legs, squeeze your arms, but the chest is open and free. Unwind your legs, lift that knee back up, Stretch the leg back. Notice how the second time through is easier usually. Our bodies know what to do. We've created a habit. Drop down, feet, maybe not a habit, but a familiarity. Reach the arms up in the air. Extend into Virabhadrasana one. And then hands come down. Dog pose. Melt your skull. Find your breath. Come forward into a plank. Feel that sense of stability of the body. Let your breath travel into the side ribs. Find the ground. If your body can do it, interlace again the weird way behind your back. If this is too much, and you feel like your shoulders just deeply inter, uh, internally rotate, then go ahead and put your arms down at your sides instead. If you're doing that, palms are facing the floor. Inhale, lift up to locust pose. So your chest and legs come off. If your arms are down at your sides, you just lift your arms, chest and legs. Breathe while you're here. Neck is long. And then exhale and relax. Come up onto all fours and let your spine move around and swish and sway. Come back towards child pose. Breathing well. Come onto your back. Now we're going to do a bridge pose with our hands underneath you. Of course, just like in um, locust pose, if you can't interlace underneath you, you do this with your arms at your sides. But if you can, again, keep feeding the pattern of your hands being in that weird position. So as you lift your hips, instead of doing the way you want to interlace your fingers, interlace them backwards, come onto the chest, or come onto the shoulders, open the chest, and feel your bridge pose. If your arms are down at your sides, press them evenly into the ground. Feel the roots of your feet, four corners of your feet. 
Breathing well. The base of your skull is nice and soft. Relax into the ground. And then exhale and release your body down. Windshield wiper your knees. Full breaths. Are you keeping your eye on the sensations of the body as novelty, as newness, as curiosity? Are you able to keep the breath as the center of your attention to keep you in the here and now? To keep you moving toward embodiment? Are you noticing habituated patterns in the body? Some that serve, some that maybe don't serve. Pause here for a moment. Notice your body on the ground. Fill up the breath and a full emptying of the breath. There's no more habituated pattern within us than our breathing pattern. 15 to 20,000 times a day have this pattern for, you know, we do the math on how many breaths you've taken in your life. It's kind of an amazing pattern. Something that's so unconscious most of the time. Let's bring and shed awareness. And feel how your breath feels. How does the inhale feel? Notice what you can. How does the exhale feel? Notice what you can. Right, we're going to lift up into a bridge again, but this time, no, um, you can interlace your hands again, the uncomfortable way, or you can have your arms down at your side, whichever is comfy. We're going to do a little bit unusual thing with our legs. So as you lift up your pelvis, first get onto the tops of your shoulders, find your stable pose, make sure your neck's in a happy place. Move your right foot just two inches or so toward the midline, ground through your right foot, Lift your left leg. The knee bend to begin. You can keep it there, or if you want to, straighten your leg up in the air. Press firmly through the right leg. Open your chest. Back of your head is on the ground, but we're not compressing our neck. All right, I'm going to put that left foot down onto the ground. Renew your two legged bridge, and then draw your left foot toward the midline just a little bit more. Readjust your shoulders. Make sure you have support systems in your upper body as well. Bend that right knee, lift it up, and then your right leg can lift toward the sky. Hold yourself with lots of strength through your leg, even through your shoulders, pressing down. Find your breath. Put down onto the ground, renew the fullness of your bridge. And then lower your hips down to the ground. Windshield wiper, head goes in opposition of knees. Trace your head one way as your knees go the other. Feel that twisting feeling in the spine, especially in the pelvis and the, and the neck, the two edges of our spine. Breathing well, flat back on the ground. Doing a little core work here. We're going to lift your legs. Um, you can either have your knees, but everybody bend your knees for a minute and just draw them in toward your chest. A little rocking if it feels good to have release that bridge pose. And then you can do this with your legs straight up in the air. If that's a little much, you can keep your knees bent. Lift your arms straight up in the air. Find your breath. All right, so arms and legs are straight up toward the sky. Find your breathing. All right, we're going to drop the left leg and the right arm. Overhead with the arm, down to the ground with your heel. Back up to center, change sides. Right leg descends, right arm overhead to the ground. And back up. Now, again, rest for a minute. That's the pattern we're going to do. Knees to chest. Now decide when you did that with straight legs, did it feel okay or would you rather do this with bent knees the whole way? So find what's healthy for your back. No novel pattern is worth it if it's something that's going to hurt you. So let's start again. Either knees straight up or feet straight up. 
palms are facing each other, fingers pointing up. Find your breath. Okay. We're going to lower the right leg, the left leg, and the right arm, and bring them back up. Switch sides. Meet up at the top. Keep breathing. Keep moving with your breath. So the right leg and the left arm move in synchronicity with each other, and the right arm and the left leg move in synchronicity with each other. You can do this with your knees bent or with your knees straight. Okay. You move aside your pattern, breathing well. And relax and put your feet down on the ground. Again, windshield wiper, knees over one side, head going the other way. Roll all the way over onto your belly. All right, so arms overhead, if you can manage that. If your body can't, then arms down at your sides. Cross hemisphere work again. Left arm, right leg lifts. Lower that down to the ground on your exhale. Next breath in. Left arm, right leg lifts. Lower that down. Cross hemisphere work is great patterning in the body. So if we feel the need to renew a sense of rhythm and harmony within us, this is kind of uh, return patterns back to a healthy place. This is a great practice to have. Are you breathing? Are you noticing the feeling of what has to work to lift your arm and leg up in opposition. So, you know, one arm, the opposite side leg. And then rest. Come up on tall fours and move that spine out or around so that you kind of free up from the back bends. Move into dog pose, spread your hands and your legs, extend upward and enjoy your breathing. And walk your feet forward, come to Uttanasana. Rising all the way up. Let's do two rounds of sun salutations to kind of feed a really beautiful pattern of breath and movement in the body. I remember novelty and a sense of familiarity, both. Okay. Inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, float forward. Inhale for a halfway lift. Melt down, left foot back on the exhales. Step back to dog pose. Big breath in. Exhale, forward into a plank. Lower yourself all the way down. On your breath in, over pose. On your breath out, all the way up to dog. Take a breath here, dog pose. Inhale fully. Exhale completely. Bring that foot forward. Now our right leg is back, left in front, open the chest. On your exhale, fold and bend. Halfway lift. Spine gets long, relax and release into a forward fold on your exhale. Rising up, arms to the sky, trace down through the center line of your body and feel that grounding force. Pause and samastitihi, hands together at the heart. Ground the corners of your feet, offer some softness into the back of your knees. On a hot dough with your heart, that sense of openness, that you're willing to be free. One more time. Inhale, arms coming up. Exhale, folding forward. Relax your neck. Halfway lift. This time, our right foot's going to go back first. Step into a lunge. On your breath in, dog pose. 
Exhale while you're here. Feel the fullness of the posture. Inhale to a plank. Lower yourself down. Bring your body into a breath. Lift up, cobra. Melt on your exhale all the way to dog pose. Pause here for a dog. Inhale. On your exhale, melt your body. Feel the roots. Inhale, right foot comes forward. Exhale, feet together, fold. Inhale for a halfway lift. Relax and melt again. Down the two feet. Rise up, arms to the sky. On your exhale, trace down through the midline to Samastitiki. Pause here for a moment. Ground your feet. Feel that present moment awareness of being in your body, in your breath, in this moment. Nothing like this moment has ever happened before or will ever happen again. So even though we bring the histories, the patterns with us, feel into the freshness of this moment. Reach the arms up to the sky. Take your legs wide apart and fold forward into Pazrita. Relax your head. Opening up the backs of your legs. We're going to put all of our weight toward our right foot. And you can come so low into that squat that your left leg straightens, but just do what your body likes to do. Not everybody can have knee flexion quite like this. Just lean into that right side. Chest is open. Come back to center. Go all the way over to the other side. Finding the left as deep as your body can go. Chest is broad and long. And then come back up to a wide squat. Turn your toes out, elbows inside your knees. Drop your hips. So enjoy your legs. Inhale, rise all the way up. Standing star. Exhale, down to the goddess. Now let's gather, swoop some of this energy from below. Rise up, breathing well. Drop some of it down. Scoop and gather. And up straight. Feet turned in again. Straight legs, head down, hands on the ground. Heel toe your feet in toward each other. Either come back to dog pose and then child's pose or just to child's pose. Let's find our way to our back. Feet back on the ground like we did earlier. Find your breath, relax, melt your shoulders. And so now we can do a little bit of a squeeze and release here. So we're going to take eagle legs and eagle arms, right thigh over left thigh, left arm over right arm. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, pick up your legs, pick up your elbows. Everything hugs in toward the midline as you breathe out. Inhale, tap your head and toes. Exhale, squeeze in. One more time, a tap. Pull your breath out. Arms and legs straight up in the air. One more round of our cross hemisphere work. Right leg down, left arm up. Bring it back. Change sides. Bend your knees. Put your right foot on the ground. Left thigh on top of right. Right arm on top of left. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, squeeze in. 
Inhale, head down, tap toe. Exhale, squeeze in. Inhale, tap, head down. Last time. This time, arms can be at your sides or overhead, legs up. Take your legs wide. Find your breath. Relax your legs down to the ground. Take a big wide starfish. Again, turn into your compass and find your shape as you kind of move your legs toward the midline and then out like a um, snow angel. Just kind of find your arc. Where is your arc right now? Melt and relax, bring your knees to your chest. Rock a little bit here. Melt your skull. Right foot on top of left knee. Reverse your pigeon. You can be still or you can be mobile, rocking a little bit left and right. Head is heavy. Grab on behind your left thigh, front of left shin, or your foot on the wall, or any other creative way of supporting yourself. Find your breath. Enjoy the welcome and enjoy and welcome sensation. Try not to run away from sensation. Curiosity, presence with sensation. Switch sides when you're ready, left foot on top of right knee, reach back to the hamstrings or the shin or any creative way of holding. Feel free to rock a little bit, feel free, feel free to be still. The most important thing you're doing is breathing. Feet on the ground. Then show I bring your knees one more time. Head left, knees right, and pick them back up. Knees left, head right. Just feel that rhythmic release of the spine. How's your breathing? Last pose, knees to chest or happy baby or anything else your body needs. Once you're complete, find Shavasana. Let us seal our practice with this deep presence, deep awareness of relaxation. And as you adjust and get comfortable on the ground, make sure your heads and neck, and neck are in a happy place, your shoulders, make sure your low back feels good, all the places. Support in any way you need. Something under your knees, something under your head, whatever it is that you need. And then feel yourself breathe here. Slow the breath down into a beautiful inhale. Leave yourself newness. Exhale and let your body rest on the familiarity of the floor behind you, below you. Every breath we can have this opportunity to experience the novelty, the curiosity of the in-breath and the deep surrender and comfort of letting our bodies go on the exhale.
Again, tiny little bit. Actually, slowly coming to your side. Find the way up to sit for the moment. Hands together. Let's offer our practice and your energy to another. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.